Providence AFC's matchup. 80,000 fans in Buffalo to see the Bills who have beaten Miami 16 of the last 20 times try to do it again. Hello, everyone. Dick Kenberg with Bill Sims, Paul McGuire, Craig Erickson, new quarterback Dan Marino. Won't play for two more weeks. You met him for the first time yesterday. Your impressions? Very impressed meeting Craig Erickson, a really a wonderful personality, and that should help him on the football field so he can he's able to lead the offensive players on the field. Craig Erickson's tough, has a good arm, He's mobile, and he will need all those qualities today in facing this Buffalo defense. But does he know the offense? Well, he doesn't know it all yet, but he's getting more comfortable with it, and hopefully uh, it'll be a better day for him. And he's going to be facing a Buffalo defense that may be the best in the league against the pass. Yeah, there's no secrets about the Buffalo Bills defense. Chris Bielman is an all-pro linebacker in the middle. And on the right side, you've got Bruce Smith, all-pro. On the left side, you got Bryce Pop, all-pro. And Chris Bielman told us one thing. So we just line up and we take a gap. Now, the other other interesting thing about the Buffalo Bills defense, 85% of the time, they send at least five guys, sometimes six. What that tells us is that they really have a lot of confidence in their corners. That's uh, young Jeff Burris and Thomas Smith on those corners. So what does Craig Erickson do to beat uh, Buffalo today? Jimmy Johnson's going to do the correct thing. He's going to treat him like a backup quarterback, run the football, play good defense. And like he told us yesterday, Jimmy Johnson, if we have to punt, not such a bad thing. That means we didn't turn it over. Now well, Jim Kelly is back for Buffalo and will be inspired by this highly enthusiastic Buffalo crowd. Back with a kickoff in a moment. Over. Yes, the veterans for the Bills are thinking Super Bowl already and home field advantage against the Dan Marino-less Miami Dolphins. And without Marino as the starter, Miami has lost eight in a row over the past three seasons. It's up to Craig Erickson today. Buffalo favored by about a touchdown. The Dolphins will get the ball first. Jarris McPhail and Irving spikes are deep. Risky to kick it off. It's a wind that's very gusty. Line drive to McPhail. The rookie who is the fastest of the Dolphins, unable to find a gap, and is drilled by Damian Covington, number 57. Here are the men in white, the Dolphins, who are three and two after winning their first three. Craig Erickson subbing for Dan Marino. He'll be protected by a tough left side. Richmond Webb and Keith Sims. Tim Ruddy had trouble in exchanges last week. Four fumbles with his quarterback, Graham Brown, on the right side. In the backfield, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Stanley Pritchett, two rookies, Randall Hill and O.J. McDuffie outside. Troy Drayton, newly acquired from the Rams, 265-pound tight end that Johnson is very high on. Miami starts from the 22. Jabbar, nothing much, maybe a yard. Ted Washington and Phil Hansen. The muscle inside along with Bruce Smith to make the stop. Here are the Bills, Hanson, Washington, and Smith. You don't see the 3-4 defense much anymore, but they play it very well here in Western New York. Pops, Spielman, Maddox, and rookie Gabe Northern are the backers. Burroughs and Smith, the very talented corners. Matt Stevens starts today, the rookie from Appalachian State for Henry Jones, broke his leg. Kurt Schultz, the other safety. Second and nine. Great and finally settling on the side and then is the recipient of the Erickson throw and a first down out to the 35 yard line. Well, you could see the indecision there, Phil Sims, with Drayton not knowing quite whether to stay in motion or to line up. Indecisive. In fact, Craig Erickson told us yesterday that sometimes they're going to break the huddle. He's going to have to tell Troy Drayton what route to run. Out to the 35 yard line on a gain of a dozen. Here is Drayton lining up on the right side. He played his football at Penn State. Didn't earn a scholarship till he was a senior there. Jabbar twisting out to the 39, a gain of four. Bruce Smith down at the bottom of the pile again. Marino, we saw him uh, warm up before the game. You could just feel the adrenaline flowing, the Sunday morning adrenaline. And he was moving rather nimbly, I thought. Moving well and hoping to come back in two weeks to play against the Dallas Cowboys. And 
uh, really a, a good recovery, but Fred Barnett, the wide receiver who we thought was going to be out for the year, looks was out there throwing with him, could be back next week. And a former Eagle, so that would boost uh, the passing game for the Dolphins. On second and six, Jabbar and Bruce Smith again as he started at that highest of levels, the all-pro defensive end, a four-yard loss. Well, the one thing that Jimmy Johnson did to his team last week, and we asked him, did you chew them out? Did you get in their face? He says, you know, my rookies, and you said they're going to start with six rookies in this ballgame. My rookies are doing very well. The young players, they're enthusiastic. The problem is my veterans. They, these guys have to step up. I have to have some of these guys step up and take the leadership role, which he's not had in the last couple of games. Bruce Smith now in a passing situation looking for one more sack to break the second place all-time tie with Lawrence Taylor. He has six sacks this year. Third and ten for Erickson. Over the middle and caught by Randall Hill. And I believe he has a first down as he reaches across the 45. Thomas Smith made the tackle. Good throw by Erickson. Excellent job by Craig Erickson. Seeing that it was a blitz by the Buffalo Bills. He knows he has man coverage outside. Randall Hill, they try to create a traffic jam for him. Good job of coming underneath. Smart play, easy throw for Craig Erickson. Get your quarterback off to a good start. What I said before, when you're sending five and six, that means you must play man on the corners, and they have that much confidence in their corners. That time, the Miami Dolphins beat them. Erickson two for two. Hill with his third catch of the year in the first down. Now deep goes Erickson, but uh, O.J. McDuffie had uh, turned to come back toward the quarterback. Erickson saying, my fault. He gets the call from the sidelines through the helmet speakers then he has to think about it and kind of assimilate yeah. uh, the new uh, code before he can give it to his teammates yeah and then just to compound matters then he has to he has the responsibility like we said earlier to tell the tight end Troy Drayton hey look Troy on this play run down 10 yards and turn towards me because I don't so, have any idea what I'm doing that's right <laughs> both, both Erickson and uh, Drayton with the armbands for their plays Drayton lined up on the left side second down and 10 Throwing the flat for Jabbar, who had fallen down. Mark Maddox on the coverage. Here's Gary Stevens calling in the play to the sidelines. Kippy Brown, the running back coach, now takes it and talks on the walkie-talkie to Craig Erickson, tells him the play. But see, that's, that doesn't take a whole lot of time. Dick. Yes. The, the problem is, is when Erickson gets it, yeah, he because to, he's new, he has to say, well, all right, here's the play. Now, what do I do with all of these guys? And then I have to put, they, the last week, what, how many times they were called? They had to take time out. Yeah, he said uh, a lot of times. Didn't quite know what was going on. But this week, a lot better, understands more, got another week of practice. So we should see a better performance because of that. And the other thing here at this there point, we're third and long. He, Jimmy Johnson said, we're not going to make mistakes. If, if we, like you said before, if we have to punt, that's not a bad thing out of the shotgun third and ten McDuffie in motion Erickson, the first sack of the game goes to Jim Jeffcoat the veteran former cowboy Paul you talked about the Buffalo Bills they like the rush they're not worried about the coverage from behind this time they sent two to the weak side a linebacker and a defensive back Miami actually does a pretty good job of picking it up. It's a deterior the inside lineman Jim Jeffco just beats Gray gets the sack. John Kidd on the punt. He's averaging over 46 yards a kick. Jeff Burris, former Notre Dame star at the 20 for Buffalo. End over end. Burris says stay away. And it'll kick out of bounds at the 17, the 18 yard line. The Bills will play it from there when we return. <laughs> Subway. What a sandwich by Allstate. For home, auto, life, and business insurance, being in good hands is the only place to be. And by IBM, solutions for a small planet. Approximately 25 miles from Orchard Park, beautiful Niagara Falls. Here in the fall, in western New York. Jim Kelly's first play. His first throw today is picked off. Dick, they're trying to get the quarterback off to a good start, get his confidence back, but Zach Thomas, what a job of seeing the eyes of the quarterback.
Kelly is too slow in delivering the ball. He goes over and intercepts it. Watch Zach Thomas's head. He's right there, number 54. Watch what he does. He sees Kelly. Now he turns right. He runs right in front of the, the tight end. Lonnie Johnson intercepted. What a beautiful play. Jimmy Johnson says this guy has football instincts, and Jim Kelly needed a good start. And wow, this crowd is going to turn against him. Zach Thomas, his first NFL interception, hugging the football. First down at the 15. Erickson to Jabbar. Jabbar to Matt Stevens, the rookie safety, up to make the hit. And a flag is down. You know, this is a classic example, this play here, of, of what Spielman was telling us about. Everybody has, has to hit a gap. Spielman doesn't make the tackle on this last play, and this is going to, going to go against Buffalo face mask. He doesn't make the play, but what he did do was force the back to the outside, and then Stevens makes the play. You don't have to make the tackle, but you got to make it possible. Number 23 on the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. You have to make it possible for someone else to, to make the play. So the penalty against Stevens as he made the tackle of Jabbar, he reached out and grabbed some face masks. You see Spielman on the inside, and then you see Stevens right there. He makes the play, makes, grabs the face mask. It'll be first down and about seven after the penalty. Make it six. So now coming uh, into today, plus eight, Miami is a plus nine leading the league in turnover ratio. Oh, Buffalo, surprisingly, minus five now. by Spielman, who stopped him cold with that tackle. Well, when we talked to Spielman, he said, everybody has a gap responsibility. Well, obviously, this is his gap. Watch this, folks. Number 54. Here's your, that's my gap. You're in my gap. Now you're out of my gap. Oh, that hurt. No gain for Jabbar. Ball still at the seven-yard line. Jabbar's carried five times for a minus one in this opening quarter. against Richmond Webb. And it is plenty noisy on the field here in Buffalo. Ball start. Number 78 on the offense, moving prior to the set. At the five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, Phil, you almost feel down here unable to run. They're going to have to go to a pass, as you see Webb uh, charged before the snap. What Dick, Jimmy Johnson said before the game, they must be patient running the football, and I believe that, and run it straight at this defense. You cannot go outside. Like Paul said, they hit the gap, they're fast, they can run to the ball, run straight ahead, and then every once in a while, pull them with a play-action pass. You see, for the second time, the wind down on the floor of the stadium blowing the ball away. Gives you an idea how tough it'll be to throw the ball toward the sideline. Second and 12. Underneath. And the oh. second Drayton is hammered by Maddox and Stevens. Maddox held him up and Stevens just drilled him. <laughs> when, you're a, when you catch the ball as a receiver, when you get tackled, what, do you like to get down right away? Well, Maddox didn't allow this. Watch here. Maddox makes the tackle. Watch on the right-hand side of the screen. Wham! Hello. That hurts, you know that? Well, Troy Drayton, first start. One week of practice, and he's already part of the game plan. They're moving him around, trying to make it easy for him to get out on the pattern, and it's worked so far. Gain of only two on that pass, so it's third and ten. Jared McPhail in the backfield, and Erickson calls time. Eight and a half remaining in the opening quarter. Miami threatening to take the early lead. This is the NFL on NBC. Mirror statistics, uh, Buffalo offense and defense in the red zone, but what's appropriate now is defensively. Defense, awful tough inside. Anytime they get you in a passing situation, with this pass rush, it's just hard to get the ball down the field and be successful. Into the wind, Erickson is throwing from the 15. Duffy was moving forward at the snap. Harrison gets it away. Incomplete. Intended for Scott Miller. Flag down. It appears.
appeared McDuffie had taken one step before the snap. You know what is really interesting about this football team? Talking to Jimmy Johnson yesterday, and then you talking to Erickson too. Phil, when you ask him, you know, we ask him what about a go-to guy. Marino is his go-to guy. Was OJ motion. McDuffie. Number 81 on the offense, moving forward before the snap. That's the guy Penalty we're just talking about. That was that that was Marino's go-to guy. But when you talk to him here, they have no go-to guy, and it's amazing to me. Well, it's hard to be a successful offense unless you can build things around one certain player. So that's why they've struggled the last couple weeks. Into the win, Joe Nedney. Not easy at all. 33 yarder. It is no good. It sailed wide to the right. Unless you hit it purely into that wind, that wind, just like a golf ball, is going to accentuate the hook or the slice. No score. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Wins. Well, first of all, he's never kicked here. And if you're kicking this way, you have to kick to the left goal post. Watch where Nedley puts the ball in the middle. It doesn't work there. You Right here, you've got to hit to that goal post and let the wind bring it back. He's never kicked here, so don't really blame him. So Zach Thomas's interception for naught. Kelly takes over to 24. Kevin Thomas is the And he produces a first tackle across the 35. They're going to spot it out at the 34. Sean Wooden, one of the rookie starters, pushed him out of bounds. The Buffalo Bills, this is what they have done the last couple weeks. A good job with the running game. Good kick out by Tim Tindell and Lewis Oliver, and look at how they've sealed it inside. Big hole for Thurman Thomas. Thurman Thomas, who is uh, closing in on O.J. Simpson's all-time rushing record in Buffalo. And against Miami, he has particularly been Effective, averaging almost 100 a game rushing. Kelly, lots of time, and cannot find his man, Andre Reed. Lewis Oliver covering. Let's introduce these Buffalo Bills, the familiar names. Fina, Brown, Kent Hull, who has been so solid in the center of that line for many years. Ostrowski and Glenn Parker. The backfield of Thurman Thomas with two tight ends, Klein on one side. The wide receivers, Andre Reed and... Quinn Early acquired uh, from New Orleans as a free agent. Lonnie Johnson has 17 catches. The other tight end. Thomas. Doesn't have great speed, but what a wonderful runner. For using his block, finding daylight, has another first down across the 44. Zach Thomas made the tackle. It's Armstrong, Gardner, the rookie. Tim Bowens, young tackle, Shane Burton, another rookie with Hollier, Zach Thomas, uh, who was on his way to being the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, Chris Singleton, Buckley and Jackson at the corners, Lewis Oliver and Sean Wooden, who played at Notre Dame, yet another rookie at safety. I love that yesterday when we were talking to Thurman Thomas and you said to me, you know, you got a chance of breaking Simpson's record. He said, yeah, you said, well, you know, all you got to do is a 65-yard run. He looked at you and he said, did you see that 69-yard pass reception last week? I took myself out of the game for half a quarter. <laughs> uh, he starts today with 307 yards rushing, 10 less than uh, his Miami counterpart, Kareem Jabbar, who has 317 at the start. Thomas, two runs, 20 yards here in the first quarter. Gets it again. The interior defense led by veteran Trace Armstrong. Well, that's what you have to do if you're the Miami defense. Stop this running game. And, Paul, it's kind of funny to say or maybe different to say, but you've got to make Jim Kelly throw the ball and beat you today because this guy's confidence has got to be as low right now as it's been in his whole career. I know. he. You know, he's in two touchdowns and eight interceptions coming into the game. His first pass is, an in, is intercepted. His second pass is thrown away. And a lot of fans here want Todd Collins to play, so Kelly heard some boos on that last misfire. He hit this time, but Andre Reed gains only about two. Thomas there to make the tackle. Thomas had 13 tackles a week ago. Forced fumble. I mean, he has become an incredible force defensively. You're talking about, you know, defensive rookie of the year, and right now, I would vote him 
And honestly, I think he's a defensive player of the year in the NFL. So maybe Bruce Smith and the, the only two I can think of. He has just been spectacular so far this year. Look at those tackles by game. Leading Miami in every game. He has his first interception. He has a sack, two forced fumbles. 54 solo tackles. Flag down off the hands of Thurman Thomas incomplete. Brace Armstrong again was applying pressure on Kelly. Let's check the flag. Or it was Armstrong who uh, got an early start. You know, the thing about what Jimmy Johnson told us about his team, they're a, they're a young team. And believe me, folks, he is not building for the future. He believes this team is what he is this year, and they can win with him. But the thing about it is you have to pay attention. You cannot, and this is a veteran. On the defense, the left defensive tackle jumped in the neutral zone. That's a five-yard penalty. Still third down. Third these and one. These are veteran players that are making mistakes, and he said, this is something I will not tolerate. You see Trace Armstrong getting off. He's a veteran. He said, our veterans have to step up. The rookies are playing extremely well. Third, and it's about a yard and a half. the man Tim Bowens was there to knock it away Armstrong fell on it after Bowens apparently stripped it away did you say before the play a couple plays ago Jim Kelly's moving around too much well I, I thought he looked a little nervous in the pocket because of the first interception Tim Bowen that is a good job of reaching out as you go by and slapping that ball out but third and one and a half I, I'm shocked that they're trying to throw the football in that situation I thought for sure they would run it Try to pick up the first down because they've had a couple successful runs. First, the first two times Thurman Thomas carries the ball, they're 10 yards apiece. And Kelly in four pass attempts, two incompletions, a fumble, and an interception. So from the 44, Miami gets another chance into the win. Kareem Jabbar rattled by Big Ted Washington and Matt Stevens. Well, you know, Phil, when I see a safety, Matt Stevens, 23, standing up on a line of scrimmage, knowing that they're going to send five, and I'm talking about five, that's defensive linemen and linebackers, yeah. and now you've got a safety that's up that close. You've got to throw the ball. Well, Paul, here you see Matt Stevens up top. Look at the people that got near the line of scrimmage, but the thing is, this is different. So what? You still can't get back there and throw the football sometimes, <laughs> so you've you got to take your medicine and run it up in there. could not find an open man. Stanley Pritchett had made the swing move to the far sidelines. Right there on that play is a good example of what you have experienced. Craig Erickson, the pressure so far, knowing it's a good pass rush, he dropped back and his feet were everywhere because he knew that time clock, I better get rid of this before Bruce Smith hits me. Watch Craig Erickson on the play. He goes, oh, he's not open. I better get rid of it. Oh, and he just throws off balance, falling backwards, not the way he draw it up. See, the thing about it is, though, he has no time to find a second guy. He's got either a primary target's open, or he's got to throw it away, or eat the ball. Erickson, on third and long, steps up, finds his man over the middle, complete, O.J. McDuffie, and a first down at the 28. Thomas Smith made the tackle. What a difference it is when you have time to throw the ball. We say this week after week after week, Bruce Smith is putting some heat he gets around Webb, he gets some heat, but then watch this. O.J. McDuffie has enough time to clear across the middle. In front of the linebackers, the linebackers miss the tackle, he makes the play. And a big one for the Dolphins on third and 11 is McDuffie, who leads Miami with 20 catches coming in, has his first today. Inside the 25-yard line, time for an update. We go to New York. Well, at Jacksonville, take a look at what the New York Jets have done as they search for their first victory of the season. Frank Reich to Adrian Morrell from the near side, cut back 14 yards, touchdown. The Jets with a 7-3 lead on the Jaguars in the first. Frank Reich for Neil O'Donnell. O'Donnell injured. The former Buffalo Bills back up to Kelly, who performs some dramatic work here in western New York. Gets the touchdown for the Jets. Bruce Smith. 
the offensive line is pointing at uh, Richmond Webb saying he drew me off. Smith. Bruce can point all you want, but if they call it against the defense, the reason they will stop the play is because Bruce Smith, I love this, runs unimpeded to the quarterback. What you, you, you used to run unimpeded, didn't you? Yeah, to the bathroom. <laughs> Encroachment, number 78 on the defense. That's yeah. a five-yard penalty. See, Bruce, three Still times in the first down. half. Last week he was offside. Now, Bruce Smith, what soon as you're offside, try to point to someone else. Richmond Webb's in front of him. Richmond never moves. Once he touches Richmond Webb, the play is dead because he's on defense. Now he runs down the, and he can't, they don't allow him to hit the quarterback. Bruce Smith against Richmond Webb has been quite a battle through the years. So you can see Webb has been much more effective in holding Smith away from the quarterback. But part of that is Dan Marino as well, is it not, Phil? Well, that's right. When you got Dan Marino back in the, uh, as a quarterback getting rid, and he probably avoided uh, 10 or 20 sacks that Bruce Smith would have had against any other quarterback. So on the penalty, Erickson in Miami looking at second down and two. Smith again leading the Bills and sacks with six this year and two forced fumbles. Now here's the man, Washington, that we heard praise not only from the Bills, his teammates, but from Miami coach Jimmy Johnson. Washington has had a great start. Ted Washington inside over the center does a wonderful job of protecting the linebackers, Chris Spielman, but also he's big and he's fast, able to penetrate and make plays behind the line of scrimmage. Hey, they had a double team on him and he broke the double team to make the tackle. Third down and two. The whole house is coming this time. That goes to Barr. Loses a couple more. He's carried the ball nine times in this first half and has not gained a yard. In fact, if that's a three-yard loss, he's minus one on nine carries. Dick, you cannot run the ball outside when the Buffalo defense has eight defenders at the line of scrimmage. Now, now... Uh, Joe Nedney comes on the field goal unit, but uh, looks like someone with a cramp. It's Sims, Keith Sims, the left guard, the three-time Pro Bowler. I'm very interested to see how Mr. Nedney now handles this. You got to look at the flags, and you got to understand that he's got to kick that ball. He is a left-footed kicker, and he's got to kick the ball to the face of that field goal to the left upright and let the ball come in and it's going to be 40 41 yards a tougher chance than the 33 yarder that he missed to the right well if you're going to kick if you're going to kick a field goal in this stadium and you want to kick it straight you've got to drill it what that means now you've got bruce smith and company all these big guys up in the middle all they can do is raise their hand and that's they, why they block four kicks this year that's right but he's a better now paul he's kicked one he's got it figured out <laughs> so he's gonna he's gonna adapt right here John he better at that. It's 42 yards officially. Oh, a fake, and it's hit up the middle, but he doesn't make it. Tackled at the 21 by Washington. So Jimmy Johnson, little uh, chicanery, but failed in Buffalo. by the Miami Dolphins to have the fake field go on. 42 yards into the win, tough situation. I believe they would probably missed the field goal anyway, but watch this. We saw this one slide. Mark Maddox, number 55, is blocked, sticks his leg out. Look at the official. That is tripping. But no call. That is a penalty, and it wasn't called. And the culprit is Don Carlson, number 39, the side judge. But the fake field goal, you see Bruce DeHaven, the special teams coach, uh, very happy with the results. No gain for Thurman Thomas. But uh, just to underline your point, Phil Sims, had he missed the field goal, Buffalo would have taken over at the 42. With the run, they start at the 21. That's a significant hunk of yardage. Absolutely. I, I, and again, Jimmy Johnson, He, the one thing I've learned, and I've played against Jimmy Johnson a few times, he really respects the win and how it affects football games, and it's especially the kicking game. So there, he showed that respect. It was a 32-yard line was the spot, That's and right. so they gained 11 yards on the fake of just real estate, second and nine. Thomas on the ground. You heard someone yell out on defense. They smelled it out. Daniel Stubbs, 96, 
makes the tackle with an assist to Zach Thomas. And coming up after our game today, join NBC Sports Game 5, the American League Championship Series as the Orioles battle the Yankees. New York leading three games to one. Game 5, the L ALCS coming up next here on NBC. Paul, you, you want to go to the game with the Yankee Stadium? They're going to be in the World Series probably, it looks like. And I know you love baseball, so I'm gonna, if I do, I'm going to go sit with George Steinbrenner. Are you? Kelly gets away from the rush and throws incomplete. Intended for Quinn early. And Kelly can't seem to find uh, an open receiver. And the... Uh, Fans who have forgotten Kelly's great successes here, some of them uh, started to boo. Don't boo Kelly on that play there. There was no one open. Miami, the Miami Dolphins did a great job, and Kelly's just running for his life back there trying to find somebody open. Now, there's Andre Reed. He's open for right now, but Kelly happens to be going the other way. If you see Kelly on a play, he's going the other way, and he couldn't find him. Chris Moore, hang time, they call him here in Buffalo, to kick to O.J. McCuffey. That's why. It's a win. He can really root one. McDuffie lets it go, and it will bounce backwards. A dolphin bounce and out of bounds at the 26-yard line. A 50-yard kick. No return for Chris Moore. Well, you might be interested. Yesterday, Miami came in. Jimmy Johnson has a coat and tie requirement on the road. This was their walkthrough. They got to do it in style, he always says. And I will say, Miami, they are a well-dressed team. Well, yeah, I love to look at Erickson right here. Yeah. He fixed his jacket so he can look real nice. And then Pritchett, the, the, the running back, watch this. He'll never take his hands out of his pocket. I like that. This, this kind of a casual move to the outside. <laughs> Jimmy with a little evangelism. No, I just say it now. I want all you guys to dress like I do. I yeah. have these $2,000 suits, so all you guys buy them. From the 26, Erickson. Batted down by Phil Hansen. Hansen, one of the many players on this Buffalo Bills team from smaller colleges. They've done a great job of finding outstanding players in smaller schools. Big people don't, do not give the front office of the Buffalo Bills enough credit. Excellent job of replacing stars. They've lost to injuries and the free agency. Truly great players, and they replace them with people from small schools and a few free agent pickups. Look at those schools, North Dakota State, Northern Michigan, Northern Iowa, Jackson State, Ferris State. Kutztown, Port Western Ontario. No Citadels in there, though. Uh, Stump Mitchell was in St. Louis once. Oh. Hand off on the draw. Pritchett finds him open territory and has a first down across the 40. Stanley Pritchett's second carry of the entire young season, and he gained 16. Well, what did I tell you guys yesterday? You know, I, I scared Stanley Pritchett yesterday. Look at this run. He gets some outstanding blocking downfield. But I said to Stanley, you only carried the ball one time going into this game for three yards. And I said, you know, I heard yeah. tomorrow <laughs> you're going to carry the ball 18 times. He says, not me. I'm a blocker. See, I love to block. And you know I don't need glory. Yeah, he, yeah, you're right. And he wants to block. He didn't care about running the football. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the type of fullback you want. Have you ever met anybody like that in football? I mean, a running back that doesn't want to carry the ball doesn't care. Coming to the end of the quarter, he has his degree in history that makes his parents mighty proud. They're both teachers. Well, the Dolphins had two chances into the win, couldn't score. We go to the second score. Not the case. Uh, on the field of play, very tricky wins, as we've already seen from Joe Nedney's field goal try. It's mild for here, Dick. That's what everybody keeps, everybody keeps telling me. This is mild for Buffalo. Beautiful today. Erickson with the win, unloads the long one for McDuffie, incomplete. And you could see McGuffey waiting for the win to kind of tail it to the sidelines. And Jeff Burris, good coverage.
Never learn, do you? Miami Hurricanes, Jimmy Johnson involved in his recruitment, 16 yards on the catch. What a job by Craig Erickson, the quarterback, looking one way, then coming back and finding Randall Hill, going across the middle and sticking it in between all the defenders. He looked right. Nobody was open. Watch his eyes. No, no, no. Good patience. Scoots up in the pocket, which is important, and then finds his third receiver. Bryce Pop was about to take it right out of his hand as he reached back to throw. We apologize for our technical difficulties. Obviously, we're working frantically to correct those. Flag down. And that usually means full start offense. You know, the one thing, Erickson, and he did talk to us about it, and he realized, you get last week, last Ball week. start. Number 84 on the offense, moving prior to the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Keeps it down. Jim Harbaugh was knocked down officially now 24 times, six sacks in the ball game. And if you don't think, folks, that that, that weighs on the mind of a quarterback, you're crazy. And uh, he has certainly brought the commendations from that Buffalo defense to Harbaugh and his toughness to take the punishment that he did. And, and the... Quarterbacks around the league are completing only 46% of their passes against this Buffalo defense. That's the stingiest of any NFL defense. First and 15. Abdul Jabbar throwing a spurt of inside the 40 of Buffalo before Ted Washington and Matt Stevens can track him down. Bruce Smith thought he got held on the play, and he's complaining. Well, he probably did, but you can't call them all, Paul. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But the two things that have worked, the two runs that have been successful for the Dolphins today, four. draw plays, deceive the defense. Show me that one again, right there. Pass, and then stick the run up in there. Oh, uh, did you see Bruce Smith get held? I mean, he had a right to complain. Still less than a yard for carry for Abdul Jabbar. Erickson swings it, complete. Abdul Jabbar. Inside the 20 to the 15 to the 14, and Miami threatens again. Well, I like what Jabbar did, except taking on the safety. I mean, save yourself. There's a long ball game here. Matt Stevens comes over and makes the hit on him. Uh, Jabbar makes a great play to the outside. Now, here he comes down. There's a sideline. Use it as your friend. Go ahead and get up. Bam, bam. He gets hit twice, and that's when you start fumbling football, trying to get a little bit more. I don't think Jimmy Johnson wants him to save himself. <laughs> You're rearing in there and getting these in yards. <laughs> Fieldman made the hit and almost knocked it free. 23 on the play. Erickson. And he drills another pass complete to the seven to Randall Hill. And Hill has shown that he's tough in heavy traffic. Excellent job by Randall Hill and Craig Erickson. Craig Erickson starting to show some confidence getting in the rhythm of the game and really just firing the ball in there where it had to be. Well, you know, we watched him at the beginning of the uh, in practice, and I looked at you and I said, you know, looking at Erickson, really for your very first time to see him up close and personal, right. and, and you said, this guy's got a, a gun. Well, you said, hey, I'm surprised it's so strong. And I said, well, Jimmy Johnson, there's a reason why he called him when he became a free agent and begged him to come to Miami. Second down three. And goes to bar, carrying a couple of tacklers with him to the five. Will be very close to a first down. Spielman, one of those in on the play. Apparently there's a flag. Bernie Kukar says offside against Buffalo. So they'll take the penalty, Will Miami, and a first down inside the five. The thing that makes Chris Spielman so good, he's not like the biggest linebacker in the league. But he's strong enough, fast enough, he takes on blockers and can get off of them. But also he has the quality of being fast enough to run around that blocker. Number 99, well, 99 on the ahead, Dick. That, that is about as angelic as you'll ever see right. Chris Spielman. Yeah, this was he, taken a couple years ago. <laughs> you know, Boy, he was bred and born to be a football player, and his son doesn't even have a chance. Noah is six months old, and he's already working on his musculature. He <laughs> rubs him every night. <laughs> so that Noah's going to be where there is Noah on the yeah. right. That is great. And Madison, the daughter on the left, he said she, yeah. Chris says she'll play too. Yeah, you don't rule out the girl now. First and goal, Miami. And Bill Jabbar. They 
allowed him no uh, hole at all. Gordon. No gain as Bruce Smith the and company Bruce. there to stop him. One no other game. thing we asked Bruce Smith, you know, I love to do it when you get a guy like Chris Spielman that, that everybody admires, and, and, and some guys are kind of afraid of him. They kind of oh. stay back off him. I said, Bruce, uh, tell me about Chris Spielman. And he started laughing. And he said, now this man is different. Yeah. You know those smelling salts that you see guys take, folks, on the sideline? You hold it maybe six or seven inches from your nose. They'll knock you out. They'll, they will. They will. They'll knock you out or scrape your head. He shoves them up his nose before a game. <laughs> shoves them up his nose. He learned that from you, Paul. <laughs> no, he did not. Can play the drive. And Abdul Jabbar not able to dent the center of that Buffalo Stop. defense. Washington and Hanson there to stack it up. Wade Phillips, former head coach at Denver, running the defense here in okay. Buffalo, and he is bringing five or six on just about every play. There's just are no gap for the run. Wade Phillips, when he was in Denver, was known as a zone coach. Let's play it safe. Ben, but don't break. He comes up here. Bruce Smith, this crew, let's rush the quarterback, put pressure on the offense. Third and goal. gave it the look of a rollout pass and then a little delay. As Jimmy Johnson said to us, Dick, and we said it earlier in the game, be patient with this running game. Run it right up the middle and at these guys. That's where you can have success. Boy, do they ever take a look at this play. It just so, it just works so beautifully. They pull, Sims pulls out the guard. They just block right at the point of attack. And then J Abdul Jabbar makes the play. Here comes Spielman coming in. Now he just gets blocked and knocked back into the end zone. He really has no chance on this play. And that's Bucky, Jeff Bucky, number 77, to block him. Joe Netney with the win for the extra point. And the Dolphins lead 7-0 on Abdul-Jabbar's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. <clears throat> Your mouthpiece in my mouth. Well, you know what upsets me? When I played, we didn't have a choice of colors. I mean, they, had, they got different colors. Yeah, but now, you, I mean, who do you think is getting this one? They get, he's just opening drawers and sticking them in. Well, they're trying to pick up... Um, uh, Ahmad Rashad's <laughs> color of the tie. Oh, the tie, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, a chic, right. he's a chic dresser, but I, I think he succumbed to pre-Halloween <laughs> weakness. <laughs> You're hurting the man. Medney to kick it off with a 7-0 Miami lead. Eric Mould, the rookie from Mississippi State. Not much there as Mould hit by Larry Izzo, free agent rookie from Rice that uh, Jimmy Johnson dearly loves. Jim Kelly, a rough start for Kelly as he returns as the starting quarterback with a fumble and an interception. And, and, and Dick, you can see it in his face, the uncertainty. I, I, I promise you, I've been there too many times. You, you can see it. He, he Now he knows he's going in to win, bad field position. This is a pretty good defense he's going to try to throw the ball against, too. Hasn't allowed a rushing touchdown now for 27 quarters, this Miami defense. Thomas seemed to hit his own man, knocked him off balance, and maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Daryl Gardner there to secure the tackle. Uh, Buffalo's fourth possession, and they've had an interception and a fumble, but uh, Miami under able to take advantage and and then a punt. They're going to try to hurry up. We thought that they kind of put this away. We'll get back to it in just a minute. They're doing this strictly for Jim Kelly to get him in rhythm. Out of this uh, K gun attack, literally has his first catch today and 13 yards. They, they, they had to find a way to get Jim into the game, so I'm sure he says, Let's go, no huddle. That makes him feel good. It actually catches the defense by surprise, so he should be able to get a, a couple quick, easy plays to get him going, too. Thomas for five, out to the 30 yard line. and it allows yeah, Kelly yeah, to be in total yeah, control because he yeah, now then yeah. calls the play. Yeah, well, now you got to understand something, though. When Kelly got hurt that next week, they were going to go with, not with Todd Collins, but they were going to go and slow it down a little bit and run some basic offense. But this is something that Jim Kelly does better than anybody. Another five-yard game. Before he's pushed back, Calvin Jackson on the corner. Appears to be good enough for another first down. Now, this is the Buffalo Bills of their Super Bowl days. Uh, K-Gun, hurry up attack. Reed wants to be replaced, it would appear. Ball spotted just across the 35, a first down. 
But Marv Levy thinks that this cage on the defense is a problem for the Sterling Thomas getting two or maybe three. Darrell Gardner and others in on the stop. One of the other yeah, things yeah. that was a problem with it, you got to, Brown was out, who was the rookie, and then they had Ostrowski in there, they had Corey Lucci in there, and these guys, they were mixing uh, Corbin Lucina in there, these are backup guys, and they didn't really grasp it, so they had to kind of get away from it. Now they've got them all back together again. On second down, Kelly. Reed, first down at the Miami 46, so the Bills make their first invasion of Miami territory. Now that was a good football play by Jim Kelly. He hung in there, went to the second receiver, and then he got hit. So he got everything he wanted. You know, the quarterback, get hit, get knocked down. Hey, made a good play. Get into the game. 16 yards on the throw to Andre Reed. Screen it. There it is. Down. Good open field tackle by Calvin Jackson after a 15-yard gain. Derek Holmes touching the ball for the first time. Boy, what a call by Jim Kelly right there. He's got him thinking pass. We're hurrying up. Defensive line. Oh, let's get the quarterback. It's a screen. Excellent job. Downfield blocking. And Calvin Jackson, number 38. If he doesn't make that tackle there, it's down inside the 10-yard line. So after a staggering start, Kelly off the ropes and really has fought back. Holmes has to give some ground and takes a loss back at the 34-yard line. Stubbs and Thomas. Zach Thomas makes a stop. Three-yard loss. Chris Singleton really made a nice play on it. He, he, he's in the backfield. He's stumbling. He knows he can't get Derek Holmes, but yet he stays with it and forces Holmes to go back outside, which enabled everybody to get in there. Watch number 55 on this play. You're going to see him down on the ground. Here comes Holmes. Boom, boom, back outside. He forces him back to the outside, and they make the play on it. Shane Burton, 75, down there to force the play wide. Holmes runs into his own man, struggling to get a yard or two, and uh, there was a moan from the crowd, thought that he might have fumbled. Shane Wooden in there as well, digging for the ball. Look at Chris Spielman, the Buffalo defense. Let's see if he uh, did uh, relinquish the ball momentarily. Uh, yes, the ball he is did. out. That is a fumble. And he recovers it. At the 32, or third and 11. This entire drive without a huddle as Kelly back to his uh, good old days, the K gun. The protection breaks down. He has to dump it off to Holmes in the flat. Thomas misses him. Lonnie Johnson, rather the receiver, the tight end, number 84. And he is tackled at the 30. This is a different offense, Phil. They take Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, and they put him in the backfield as a blocker. Yeah, he was just the escape route. Right, just to help with the pass. Runs. Fourth down here, fourth and nine. You might as well go for it. Into the wind. Right. We've already seen Netney having his troubles uh, into this uh, cross wind that blows from left to right and actually to the far corner. Kelly resets Derrick Holmes. This drive uh, primarily without Thurman Thomas. guard moved on the play. That's going to put him back to fourth and about 14. Number 79 on the offense, moving prior to the snap. That's a five-yard penalty. Still fourth on. On comes the punt team. And uh, Mara very unhappy about those 13 penalties and the win against Indianapolis last week. Most uh, in his 11 years coaching here in Buffalo, winning his coach in Bill's history. They inducted him into the Hall of Fame, his name up on the all-star wall here at Rich Stadium. Moore with a pooch. He knows the win, but uh, a little too far with this one. Uh, Miami will get the touchback at the 2015 net on the punt by Moore. and fans here and a bit surprised by the score seven nothing and Miami in the lead have the ball again at the 20 missed the short field goal had a interception and fumble earlier couldn't capitalize and goes to bar for three 
in his 11th year here in Buffalo. Marv Levy, age 71, his 42nd year of coaching. He's a He's an alphabet coach. He's been everywhere. He's at NCAA, USFL, CFL, NFL, even worked at NBC with Marv Albert. A year younger than George Hallis, and there's no generation gap in uh, Buffalo. The players love him, and they understand it, and are inspired by him. Second down, Erickson, under pressure, throws way wide as the uh, win takes that away from O.J. McDuffie. Nobody open, he knew. Get rid of the football. Ted Washington coming from inside on the defense just powers past the, the blockers. Watching got that right arm, rips up through it, and then, oh, he just kisses him down, though. What do you want him to do? Oh, no, no, I just thought maybe it was a hard lick, but it wasn't. But no, you've got to have those as a quarterback. You don't want to get hit hard every time. But you know, they got so many all pros in this team, and they all, every, every time you talk about Buffalo's defense, you talk about Ted Washington, number 92. Third and eight for Erickson. Blown play, almost intercepted to Bryce Pop, Jarris McPhail. That was a. Uh, Perhaps by design, but certainly awkward at best. Well, if it was by design, it sure wasn't designed that way. It was a shovel pass, and, and what happened is, is that Ken Urban came off the corner and created a problem. Ken Urban, number 27, and the slot down at the bottom. And tell comes inside, catches Miami by surprise. Not able to execute the play. Russell Copeland back as John Kidd with the wind. He kicks here in Buffalo, so knows well these tricky wins. Not a good kick, and Copeland, excellent return to the 44-yard line. A good field position for the Buffalo Bills, trailing the Dolphins by a touchdown. And 45 yards fewest points per game and Buffalo in the low five and yet the only team with a winning record four and one their opponents have scored more points than have the Bills averaging just over two touchdowns a game and they trail seven nothing today that's his sixth consecutive completion Thurman Thomas to the, to the 47 yard line a game of three Terrell Buckley the tackler Jim Kelly, who was expecting his second child, he said right now the baby would be born on his birthday, Valentine's Day next year. Started slowly in the offense and now going to the no huddle is obviously much more comfortable. In fact, uh, a few years ago here, took one 103 yards. Lewis Oliver does a terrific job of seeing the receiver going down the field. I thought he was wide open. Could be a touchdown, but he reads it, cut underneath Andre Reed, and should have had the interception. Third down and seven. Buffalo 0 for 3 on third down so far today. <laughs> the second time today. Norman Hand and Grace Armstrong. And Armstrong has been a demon for Buffalo to block here in the first half. He's been on Kelly almost every play. Uh, and you can't blame this play on the hurry-up offense because the offensive line was set up. Now watch Hand. Hand just breaks the outside. He just runs over Parker. I mean, he ran over Parker. But I think Parker's foot got caught under one of his own men, and he went down. Chris Moore to punt into the breeze. Boy, look at the wind knocked that one down. It takes a Buffalo bounce and then a Miami bounce, <laughs> and it's down at the 34-yard line. Sneaky win, 7-0 Miami. in the skies for opposing quarterbacks Bryce Pop and Bruce Smith Pop who led the league last year with 17 and a half sacks and Smith currently tied for second all time with his sack total and as a duo they lead uh, Martin and Turnbull of New Orleans by nine sacks last year in this. 
A reverse. And it goes to O.J. McDuffie. But read well by Gabe Northern. The rookie not fooled at all. Held his ground. Craig Erickson. You know, well, that's what bothers me. You know, quarterbacks, they should be able to block better than that. Paul, you're, you're right. I do not disagree. <laughs> this play has the Bills defense fooled. And Craig Erickson, as a quarterback, one thing you do when you get somebody that big and you got to block him, just dive at his feet because at least they'll jump to try to get out of the way. I was only joking, but I'll tell you what, Gabe Northern just made a sensational play. Boy, this first half has sped by. We're already at the two-minute warning. 7 nothing Dolphins. All here in western New York. Buffalo trailing Miami 7 nothing, and Baltimore trails the Yankees. Three games to one. Game five follows our football coverage at 4 o'clock Eastern time. We'll see uh, a report directly from uh, Baltimore. Dre Gumble, Mike Ditka, Joe Gibbs, and Chris Collinsworth on the Domino's Pizza halftime report. It'll be another Erickson, Scott Erickson, pitching later. Currently, it's Craig Erickson for the Miami Dolphins. On second down and 10. Abdul Jabbar straight ahead for three or four to the 38 yard line and with a seven nothing lead uh, Miami's Jimmy Johnson perhaps uh, playing as he promised you know fifth, doesn't want any mistakes and play it conservatively and he's getting what he wanted and, and and the reason he can do that it gets overlooked in this game because of Buffalo but this Miami defense they're pretty good too and they're able to hold teams down not give up big plays except for last week. And that's why they can be patient on offense today, run the football and throw it when they want to. 123, 122 left in the half. Third and five for Erickson on the blitz. Tipped, but caught. McPhail struggling, and it does not appear he made it. He's about a yard shy of a first down. Jarris McPhail with the catch. The one thing that I, I, I've rarely ever heard a coach say, Jimmy Johnson said to us yesterday, and you brought up, here you're going to watch the tip ball right here. But Hanson, number nine, he gets his head, hand on the ball. McPhail, I mean, just heads up play trying to get the first down. But the thing about Jimmy Johnson, what he said to us yesterday, it's all right to punt. Buffalo has called time. There's one minute left in this first half. It's fall. That means two things. Near the 10-yard line for the Bills. Kid driving one. Copeland lets it roll. And it will take a friendly Miami bounce and down at the five by Sean Hill. 52 on the punt by Kid. No return. Now the Bills less than a minute to go. NBC tonight, an all-new Third Rock. Tips on getting out of a compromising situation with your girlfriend. You're about a quart low. Third Rock from the Sun tonight after Dateline on NBC. <laughs> Well, I'll let you comment. I can't. <laughs> I'm just being careful. I don't want to comment on it. But I will. Well, never mind. There's aliens everywhere. Mm -hmm. From the five, and uh, with no room to run, uh, or pass in this case for Jim Kelly. He does run. Aaron Jones uh, makes the tackle, and timeout called by Miami this time. Now Jimmy Johnson sees the possible opportunity to get some field position. 43 seconds left. Holmes crosses the 10 to the 11-yard line. See if Jimmy Johnson uses his final timeout. Apparently not. He realizes that without the full complement of the three timeouts, he really couldn't do much in this situation. You know, I noticed something new in this game here in the punts. And the ball's rolling. You're kind of hesitant about going in the end zone, coming back out of the end. This ball, when it hits the ground, you have no idea where it's going to go. And in the air, it's no uh, picnic either. You, <laughs> you try, really try. don't. This is oh. the craziest place. I mean, the wind here is absolutely nuts. Marv Levy's uh, concern continues to be putting points on the board. His defense brilliant again, although allowing one touchdown, but unable to punch one in himself. And Jimmy Johnson's Dolphins lead the field at halftime, leading 7-0. We've got a great couple at our NBC studios in New York. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL on NBC Halftime Report, brought to you by Domino's Pizza. For hot and wow, call Domino's. Now. All right, Dick, we welcome you.
And I hate to even think about it, but could Paul McGuire have been right that Todd Collins should have been the guy because he's more uh, more of a mobile guy? Paul couldn't be right, could no, he? No, no, he couldn't. Thank you. I, I was concerned <laughs> for a minute I'll, there. I'll, I'll say this. Hey, they finally got going. The first time that Kelly looked like he was doing anything, all of a sudden they go back to a no huddle. I think they, at halftime, if I was in there right now, I'd say, look, that's what we're going with. Put him back in what he does well. And that's start off good. You're right. Yeah. yeah, but Jimmy's got the game right where he wants it right now. He's not running the ball effectively, but he's taking time off the clock. They're not making any mistake. And I'll tell you what, they're playing inspired defense. You got this defense is so much better than it was a year ago. It's unbelievable. And Jimmy told us in the pregame show that even if the running game's not working, he's going to stay with it, right. stay with it, and that's going to be the key to the second Six half. Six straight plays. Kareem Abdul Jabbar ran it until he finally got into the end zone. It's the only touchdown of the game so far, seven nothing. In Dallas. Take a look at what's happened with the return of Michael Irvin. The Cowboys lead the Arizona Cardinals 3-0 at halftime. Michael Irvin, four catches, 42 yards. Joe, not as big an impact as we thought, but it's early. No, and I'll tell you what. Sometimes when you lose your rhythm, Mike will tell you this, you're coaching offense. Sometimes you get out of sync, and I think that's what Dallas is right now. They're having a tough time, and putting Irvin back in there, it doesn't seem to be an immediate cure to it. It's not only their passing game to Irvin. I think it's everything. Their running game, nothing is in sync right now. I think that they just don't have the confidence. They used to think they could walk on the field and bam, they're going to knock you out of it. Now they don't have that confidence. But you, you know the other thing, uh, Eric Hill, Eric yeah, Swan, right. and Nia I mean, these guys yeah. aren't too bad on the yeah. defensive side right now. Let me say, this is a different Arizona oh, yeah. Cardinal team, oh, too, yeah. this year. So, 3 nothing Dallas uh, at halftime in uh, Irving, Texas. Meanwhile, in Foxborough, the Patriots leading the Washington Redskins by a score of 16 to 10. Action now from Pittsburgh, Three River Stadium, where the Steelers leading the Bengals 3-0 as they approach halftime. Bill Cower and the Steelers looking for their fifth straight. On Pittsburgh's opening drive, Jerome Bettis carried seven times for 35 yards, including his 12-yarder, helped set up a Norm Johnson field goal and make it 3-0. The Bengals dead last in the AFC in total offense. Jeff Blake sacked four times in the first half, including twice by Chad Brown. That was for a loss of seven. The Steelers with a slim 3-0 lead. In Tampa, the Bucks hosting the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings lead this one by just a touchdown. Robert Smith went 26 yards as Tampa Bay still searches for its first win. Houston in Atlanta to play the Falcons. The Oilers lead it by a 10-0 count. AFC's second leading rusher, Eddie George, looking to exploit a weak Atlanta defense. Chris Chandler fakes the handoff to George here and then goes deep for Chris Sanders. Is this pass on the money? You bet it is. 62 yards and a touchdown. The Oilers lead it 7-0. Atlanta quarterback Bobby Hebert back to pass, hit on the release by John Henry Mills. Raphael Robinson picks it off for the Oilers. It led to an Al Del Greco 27-yard field goal, and the Oilers are leading the Atlanta Falcons by a score of 10 to nothing. Falcons still haven't found the answer for Jeff George, at least not yet. Well, that's right, and Chris Chandler got hurt running into June Jones on the sideline. This June Jones, he's a quarterback killer, no <laughs> doubt of it. Getting every quarterback in the league gone. Put, put up another friend Thank on you your list. Very much, I know. In New Orleans, the Saints hosting the Chicago Bears. The Bears lead this one 17 to 7. In Carolina, the Panthers hosting the Rams, and it's a 28 to 7 Carolina lead. And the New York Jets in Jacksonville looking for their first win, leading at 14 to 6. Nick Lowry has a cheering section in Jacksonville. His next field goal is going to set a new NFL career record to pass Jan Stenerud. Quarterback Frank Reich playing for injured Neil O'Donnell rolls right, finds Adrian Morrell, who cuts back inside for a 14-yard touchdown, and the Jets take a 7-3 lead. Second quarter now, the Jets' next possession, right, 12 yards to the sure-handed wide receiver Wayne Corbett, his second touchdown pass of the first half. The Jets go up 14-3, and it's now a 14-12 score. The Jets are leading the Jacksonville Jaguars. When we come back, we'll look ahead to Game 5 of the American League Championship Series. First, a word from the NFL and these messages from your local station. this great Buffalo defense and maybe we haven't given praise enough to what the Dolphins do defensively. I agree. Phil and I were talking this at halftime. This, de this defense of the Miami Dolphins is absolutely solid. Even with the rookies in there, it doesn't make any difference. They are giving the offense an opportunity to win this football game. And regardless of what happens today, Dick, this is why I believe this Miami team is going to be in this playoff hunt all year long. Jimmy Johnson coaching them, and the defense is good. So Zach Thomas, he had six tackles to lead Miami and an interception. Buffalo hesitates, and it may work. Eric Moles, the rookie, breaking free and tripped up as he gets to the 30-yard line. Whether that was by design or not, I don't know. But
but Moles, he stopped as if he was going to take the touchback. And Miami relaxed, and then he took off on them. Well, what I think he did is I think he thought he came out of the end zone. He went up and stopped. Watch watch when he catches the ball. He's going to hesitate. Now he gets up and stops, and he's, well, uh-oh, maybe I better come out. So he sees something to the outside to his right, makes the play, makes the move, and then trips up. Robert Bailey got just enough of him to force him off balance. Eric Mould, the rookie from Mississippi State, the number one pick of the Bills in the spring draft. Jim Kelly starts just uh, inside his 30-yard line. Thurman Thomas breaks into the clear. Lewis Oliver, the last man for Miami, makes the tackle at midfield, and a flag is down. That's a bad way to start. Instead of a gain of 20, it'll be 10 back the other way. Excellent job by the Buffalo's Bill offensive line. The right side, Jerry Ostrowski and Glenn Parker opening the hole up. And Thurman Thomas straight ahead. You would have to think at halftime, Marv Levy says to this team, we've got to start running the football and making that a big factor for our offense and take, off the, take the pressure off of Jim Kelly in the passing game. Thurman Thomas started the game, two carries for 20 yards, and just 10 yards his last six carries. Until that one, then the 20-yard run call back. From the spot of the foul, so second down, first down and 12. As Thomas again gets the call for little or no. The holding call was against the tight end 84 Lonnie Johnson now you see it right here here's the holding and that's at the point of attack it's his arms wrapped around so when you see the penalty now it's it's first and 12 the penalty is 10 yards from that spot Johnson who played at Florida State went to high school in Miami followed the Dolphins there White again, led by rookie Daryl Gardner from Baylor and young Tim Bowens. What, Tim Bowens made the stop. what I think is interesting in the second half, Paul, we talked about it at halftime, is the fact that Jimmy Johnson chose to kick off and have the win to his back in the third quarter to try to go ahead and put this game, get ahead, put it out of reach for Buffalo when they do get the win, has to do nothing but throw the football. Buffalo will have the advantage of the win in the fourth quarter, but they trail 7-0, looking for their first conversion on third down. This is third and five. Kelly hits from behind. It's Armstrong again. Trace Armstrong has two and a half sacks today. Former Florida star, number one pick of the Bears in 89. Well, here comes Trace Armstrong up the field. Now, Parker, he gets right around Glenn Parker and headed for the quarterback. And the reason for this is that, that Jim Kelly was looking for Andre Reed to the outside, who was single covered, and also Moles to the left side. They were both together and both covered. Chris Moore delivers a punt into the win. O.J. McDuffie lets it bounce. Stay away is the call. Down by Mark Pike at the 25-yard line. 48 on the punt. Miami has its first position coming up. By the Principal Financial Group. For over a century, your age in retirement insurance and investment products. And by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who remind you fresh beer tastes better. Is there anything... More beautiful than October in the Midwest and East? No. It's the reason why you live here, right, Paul? That's exactly right. Besides, I've never made enough money to get out of here. <laughs> First down, Miami at the 25, leading 7-0. Erickson to the sidelines and the catch by Jerris McPhail. And Erickson delivering a ball under heat, 11 yards. First down. Excellent job of Craig Erickson standing in the pocket, feeling the pressure. Buffalo gets what they want up top. Bryce Pop against the running back. Excellent job of blocking Bryce Pop to the ground. And Craig Erickson knows he has an extra second and gets rid of the ball and makes a good throw. Meanwhile, McPhail, who is the fifth-round pick, one of three fifth-round picks, all of 
of them contributing. You talk about a, a draft by Jimmy Johnson. He gets McPhail in the fifth round. He gets uh, Sean Wooden in the sixth. He's starting today. He gets Shane Burton in the fifth round out of Tennessee. He's starting at defensive end today. And gets Zach Thomas in the fifth round. And he is more than starting for the Miami Dolphins. After the 133rd pick, those four players all playing prominent roles. Seven yard line. Boy, Richmond Webb just got an excellent block on Bruce Smith on the outside, and you got to block one on one on Bruce Smith. We said that this guy handles Bruce in the AFC East better than anyone else. 78 on 78. Look at this. Rolls him to the outside. Bruce is even grabbing Richmond Webb's jersey, but you're not even close to the quarterback. That is outstanding blocking. It's like a couple of heavyweights, the matchup. Webb a little heavier, a little taller. Both of them uh, frequent visitors to Honolulu after the season. Wide open underneath is O.J. McDuffie. It's a first down at the 47. Kurt Schultz made the tackle. You know, Phil, this whole thing has changed when Craig Erickson has time to throw the football. It, and it's all based on that. That's right, Paul. And the fact they're going down the field and, and doing a good job of trying to confuse the secondary, who to pick up, which receiver. But here's the important thing. Craig Erickson can see in front of him. No defensive lineman in his face makes it easy throwing the ball down the field. Ten yards on the throw by Erickson, who thus far has really outpitched uh, Jim Terry. Abdul Jabbar and Phil Hansen, one of the underrated Bills, or at least uh, not as publicized as uh, Pop and Smith and Spielman, makes another good play. <laughs> but she used to say when you go down the line, you got Hanson, and then you got Washington, and Smith, and Pop. Then you got Spielman, and then Gabe Norton, the number two draft choice. She's, she's just plugging up everything. And they've got a great defensive front seven. On second and a dozen. Erickson. Going to be an almost intercepted. Gabe Northern has his sights on a touchdown. That'll look to be six for Buffalo when Erickson threw it. That's the what pressure will ball. do. That's what, pre sorry, Paul, but that's what pressure will do. Get the quarterback in a situation where he panics, and at the last second, still make this throw across the field in man coverage. Very fortunate to get away with that. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar saw it coming, and he went out to, to help out. He doesn't get a piece of the ball, but he gets a, a grab on Gabe Dorland's arm. There's Erickson's numbers, 112 yards, so over 50%. Not many quarterbacks have been over 50 against Buffalo this year. No one in the backfield. The long throw this time for Hill. Not close. Covered by Thomas Smith. Well done by Smith in his fourth year out of North Carolina. Dan Marino on the sidelines. Hopes to be back in two weeks. Greg Erickson acquired with the injury to Marino as a free agent from the Colts. Fourth down, kid comes on to punt. Russell Copeland at the 10. Beautiful kick. Copeland lets it go. And it bounds into the end zone for the touchback. 55 yards, 35 net. Buffalo trails by seven. a couple, three hours before the kickoff today, testing that fractured ankle, and uh, no question, he can still throw it on even a one ankle. No question, he can get the shotgun and do well every play, but got a chance, I went down the field and talked to Dan Marino this morning, and he was really upset, and I thought, well, you're not feeling well, whatever, he goes, I can't believe it. All the times I've come up here and played in rain and still look at it today, it's beautiful, and I should be out there, and, and I, I can understand the frustration, frustration right there, Dan. Not too many days like the Buffalo like this. Derek Holmes trying to get outside, may have picked up a yard or two. Uh, what else did he uh, tell you that you can share with us? Well, Dan Marino's been in this league a long time, since 1983, and he is so excited about this football team. The way they play, the way they practice, and the fact that 
Jimmy has just brought in something new, and he believes in what they're trying to accomplish, and he accomplished, and he is not worried about the fact that it is young and got all these rookies playing. He believes they can win and do well in the playoffs with this team. At 34, that uh, all that youth has inspired him to read and complete, covered by Terrell Buckley. I think you're right. I think it does. But even getting new teammates changes your outlook. It changes the way you practice and everything, and I think he's got caught up in that. And it's a good thing that late in his career. Now, the other hand, let's go back to Kelly yesterday. We sat down and talked to Jim Kelly, and he said, hey, our defense has just done it all for you. We haven't done a thing on offense. They have zero points in this ball game. They haven't really threatened in this game. The offense isn't doing a thing. And the defense is, is off of that one touchdown. They're shutting out Miami. Third down and nine. Buffalo yet to cross the Miami 30-yard line today. Oh, the middle of the knee. Doubles and hangs on. A typical Reed catch over the middle. Buckley and Wooden finally stop progress. It's a first down at the 38. Flirting with danger, but it works out for the Buffalo Bills that time. And when you throw the ball over the middle against Miami's defense in these situations, look at that. Two defenders, one on the, behind him and one in front. That's where the strength of this defense is when they're playing zone coverage. Jim Kelly kind of fortunate that time with an excellent throw. Reed's fourth catch, uh, juggling, albeit. 16 on the play. Two tight ends, Tony Klein and Lonnie Johnson. And a gain of only one. Tackled by Tim Bowens and Daniel Stubbs. Zach Thomas, they say how active he really is. And Zach Thomas, number 54, watch him here. He's going to the ball. Does he get nailed? Does he get to the ball? <laughs> That's the one thing Jimmy Johnson. Uh, if the big guy gets hands on him one on one, Zach Thomas does not have a chance. <laughs> Zach Thomas, he did the smart thing. Just back out of there. Don't get killed. Holmes. To the 43 yard line. Three more before Jackson and Singleton, along with Burton, can make the stop. A reminder that uh, no late game on NBC in football, but you'll be able to watch the fifth game of the American League Championship Series as it'll be uh, Erickson for Baltimore trying to extend it to a game six and Andy Pettit trying to wrap it up for the Yankees who look to the World Series for the first time in 15 years. That series is going seven games. They said what? you're an expert. <laughs> How many innings are in a baseball game do you know? How many games are there in an inning? Kelly goes down again, another sack, and it's Zach Thomas on the blitz. All right, Zach. I made Zach feel bad once by, by getting blocked. Okay, by Ostrowski. Now Zach comes back. He said, if you're going to show me one way, show me the other. Here he comes on a blitz. Look at it, straight to the quarterback. He gets blocked. He just goes right at Kelly's feet. Boom, you're down. And Chris Moore will have to put it into the wind. 6-16 left in the third quarter. Beautiful high kick, and now the wind will blow it back. Dirt catch. McDuffie covers the ball. And is able to cover it at the 29-yard line. And that's the other hazard, just fielding that punt. It's almost as if they're throwing it out of a helicopter at 1,000 feet. It's 30-mile gusts here in Buffalo today. Miami able to maintain control, as they do with a lead, 7 to nothing. Buffalo shut out are the hometown Bills by Miami thus far. 6.04 left in the third as Craig Erickson and Miami take over at the 29. Irving spikes in there for the first time. The throw wide open is Hill. 45 40, chased by Bills. 20 and cut down by a saving tackle, Kurt Schultz. A flag is down where the contact was made between Hill and the cornerback. 61 yards if. It's against Buffalo. The referee is signaling, bring it on down here. Is it a holding penalty? It's holding. Yeah, it's holding. So Erickson with the win goes to the bomb and Randall Hill, who has made holding. number 22 on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. He's made some terrific catches with Buffalo Bills all around him. This time was wide open. What I like is Randall Hill takes his time, sells the route, then takes off Jeff Burris. 
fooled by it. Must have thought it was going to be a run and play. Gets called behind them, uh, up by the line of scrimmage. Randall Hill, excellent job of getting down the field and catching the ball. First down and 10. The ball just outside. No, it is first and goal. First and goal. Well, incomplete. Unable to get. There's another flag intended for Randall Hill, but his path was uh, denied as he tried to cut over the middle. Erickson on that very first play that threw the ball down the field to Randall Hill was a play-action pass that just froze everybody. And they know that you would, on play-action pass or any passes, the Buffalo Bills on their corners are going to play man-to-man. Pass -man. interference, number 28 on the defense. That is a first down. That's Thomas Smith. But they know, Miami knows, that they're going to play man-to-man. -man. Now, here it comes again. There's Inside, you can't push when the ball's in the air. Very good call. Thomas Smith, watch him come Thomas in. Smith Boom, there it is. That's it. See, the reason for that, he could hit it five yards, Dick, but the ball was in the air. First and goal at the six, and Irving Spikes was playing with an injured left Still hand, and that concerned line. Jimmy Johnson Spikes. that he might be prone to fumble, but Spikes showing a good burst. Chris Bielman makes a tackle at the three. We said to Jimmy Johnson yesterday, Dick, what about this crowd? What about yeah. your young guys? What about us? He says, they're going to be all right. I'm not worried. They're all right. I'm not going to worry about it. They're, they're all right. <laughs> oh, of course they're going to be all right because we've had a chance to watch them practice, and Jimmy Johnson is on them, and some of these players said they worry about making a little mistake in practice that he'll get upset and he goes, hey, Jimmy, he might even cut you right on the practice field sometimes. So they're used to the pressure. They deal with it well. Craig Erickson calls time here with its second and goal uh, outside the two-yard line. So we'll take a break. 4.55 left in the third. Miami threatening to extend its lead. Jimmy Johnson's reaction as Craig Erickson forced to call a timeout. up the middle denied the goal line but he's uh, inside the one I'll tell you one thing I, I, I really believe that, you know they're that close but you're you're like third and short I don't I don't even think field, as well as that defense is playing I'm not even thinking field goal here I'm thinking seven points and put 14 on that board and now force Buffalo to throw the football and then you've got him they bring in Robert Wilson Miami 255 pound fullback along with Pritchett and Spikes Wilson wing to the right. That's where they're going. Spikes. Touchdown. Irving Spikes scoring for the third time this touchdown. year as he dives from short range and Miami leads 13 to nothing. Excellent job right there by the Miami offensive line. They didn't allow any penetration. You had to think that it was going to go right. The fullback's going that away. The defense, look at everybody coming up in there. But the line of scrimmage, the offensive line won the battle. Gives Irving Spikes the room to jump over the top. Looked like he had trouble with a handoff. Almost yes. over. Try for point by Nedney. The Dolphins lead 14-0 as they go 71 yards. The big play, the 61-yard pass from Erickson to Randall Hill. Spikes dives for the score. 14-0. his way out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Kirby Dardar made the tackle. Jim Kelly only 58 yards of passing production. He's fumbled once and lost it. He's been intercepted once. He's been sacked four times. The only successful drive of the game for Kelly was going into the wind as they are now and he used the no huddle. Well, on the first play now, they don't. They really don't. They come off, they go into the huddle, and we'll see if they go back to the no huddle because it was successful, especially on running plays. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Fake to Thomas. For the tight end, Lonnie Johnson. First down at the 39. Still, just looking at clock management. It almost as if the Bills have to keep possession of this drive until they get the wind change at the start of the fourth. Wind change and they need to change field position so where a big defensive play could result in a score right away for the offense. But 
they definitely need to get a couple first downs, Nick, like you said, and get this thing changed around. Well, they got the receivers. They went into the huddle, and Andre Reed went out to the wrong side. Tony on the tight end, wide left. All play action. Kelly. Wide. And a first down to Quinn Early. Finally tackled by linebacker Dwight Hollier. 26 yards on the play. Jim Kelly gets time, and what that does down the field, it lets the receiver get behind the linebackers who are drawn up by the underneath coverage. Win early on the in cut, no linebacker in sight. Then Zach Thomas finally gets there, but look what time does for quarterback and receivers. And all three guys covered Andre Reed, all three defensive backs. First down at the 35. For five to the 30 yard line. 239, 238 left in the third period. Zach Thomas with a tackle. Second down, five. Jimmy Johnson. There's one thing they say, these players about him, is that every day is a new day. You don't hear the same messages. He's got something, right. something fresh. He has a different agenda every single day. First down at the 21 for the veteran from Oklahoma State. First time that they've been inside the Dolphin 30. Keep in mind, folks, that the Miami Dolphins have not given up a rushing touchdown in 26 quarters. Well, 28 now, and this would be the 29th quarter. So, I mean, and even talking to Jim Kelly yesterday, he said, if we're going to get down into the red zone, which they're about two yards away from the red zone, which is the 20 on in, he said, we may have to throw the ball to get it in there. Kelly, veteran, knowing the wins here, working well into it. safety made the stop you, you watch this team and you see this drive they're making it look so easy and it brings back to what chris spielman said he goes it's it's easy to play up here what you do is you play a close game and you wait till the very end and somehow we pull it out and uh, they seem to play well the buffalo bills when they're in panic situations close games phil they've won 11 straight games by seven points or less that's some kind of a record i believe that I and mean, if you keep that sort of stuff uh, i don't know if anyone's done that 11 in a row, they've won all 11. Little delay. Typical drive by the Buffalo Bills with a no huddle. Kelly leading them and Thurman Thomas, 19 yards for the payoff. The first rushing touchdown allowed by the Dolphins all season and uh, snaps a string of 28 shutout quarters in that regard. It's 14 to 7. What a job by the Buffalo offense and in particular Jim Kelly. He's checking, he's changing the play. The, the Dolphins are in a blitz defense. If you get past the first line against the blitz, there's nobody there to make the tackle. I'll tell you, John Cena gets an outstanding block, but so does Ruben Brown. 79 to 70 coming out. They just open up the hole. The inside is, is sealed by Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, and Thurman goes in with nothing else. There's Ruben Brown to well, start something new here in Buffalo. He's jumping in the crowd. It's a, it's a good thing that wall is only two feet high. You weigh that much. <laughs> well, the only problem about Ruben, Ruben's, Ruben's happy, but when you throw, when Ruben throws, Ruben throws himself in there, there ain't a whole lot of people that can pick him up and throw him back. Good point. And, and, and the big thing is, is that on that touchdown, Jim Kelly, after it was over, was as excited as you could ever see a quarterback get because he knew he did a wonderful thing in changing that play. Well, they scored going into the win. Final minute now, the third period, and Buffalo will have the advantage if there is of the wind in the final quarter. 
Thomas, by the way, bookends that string of 28 consecutive quarters without a rushing touchdown allowed by Miami late last year. He was the last one to rush for one, and he gets a 19-yard run for score today. Irving Spikes and Jared McPhail deep for Miami. It's McPhail. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line for the rookie from East Carolina. An update now. Let's go to Greg Gumbel. All right, Dick, in the AFC Central at Pittsburgh, watch Mike Tomzak, the short flip to Cordell Stewart. Cordell will make the adjustment on his helmet. No need. Nobody touches him. 32 yards into the end zone, under three minutes to play in the third. The Steelers lead the Bengals 10-3, Dick. It's always one of my favorite plays to watch. Uh, you saw it off in the old day, the fake screen left and screen right. Pittsburgh is the best screen team in the NFL history. Not in history, just this year. Okay. Last year they were pretty good. Well, pretty good. Yes. This crowd comes to life. 31-yard line, Miami. And a sack by Bryce Pop. Pop with his fifth of the year. He just runs over Stanley Pritchett, number 36. He got the back fullback trying to block on Bryce Pop. He just tees off. He's going directly to the quarterback. And Stanley Pritchard is standing there. I said, you got to get your head up. He does, but Bryce Pop just takes him back. Boom. Sack. Great play. Pop from the little town, Scranton, Iowa, of 700, went to northern Iowa. He only had 12 men on his senior high school football team. Up the middle goes Abdul Jabbar for a very short gain at the end of the third quarter. Buffalo fans feel it's plenty of time for the Bills. They've stopped the clock with four seconds showing. I don't see a penalty flag. Chris Spielman, he, I mean, he knows where they're going to run the play. He told us yesterday. I watched so much film. Look at if he is not looking. He's in the hole in the backfield, so he knows exactly where it's coming. It's he, a motion penalty declined by the Bills. He said something really interesting, Paul. He says watching film. That's how you get instincts. You know where to go out in the field. You get that field. And there it is, the end of the third quarter. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. The use of this telecast without the express written consent of the NFL is prohibited. Welcome back as we open the fourth quarter. Dick Enberg with Paul McGuire and Cole Sims and 80,000 Buffalo voices as Erickson brings them out third and 14. He fires, almost intercepted on the far sidelines. Charles Jordan, the intended receiver. Kurt Schultz there defensively. Jeff Burris had excellent coverage on the outside. And watch Jeff Burris, number 22. He's going to get his hand in, tips the ball. Schultz, if he's looking at the ball and not looking at the receiver, he makes the interception. Pretty good throw into the wind by Erickson. Good play by Burris. Now John Kidd into the wind. Russell Copeland at the Buffalo 30. That's a great kick to the 24. Kirby Dardar and others make the tackle at the 31-yard line. The Bills have it back early in the fourth quarter. Jim Kelly, seven behind Miami. To buy genuine Chevrolet, the cars more Americans trust. By Norelco Razor for our closest shave ever. And by DirecTV, satellite TV at its best. Welcome back to Buffalo, where the fans are feeling a, in a much more uh, positive, if you will, <laughs> attitude as the Bills have scored to cut Miami's lead to 14-7, have it at their own 32. Kelly comes out throwing to the side. Miami's incomplete. Andre Reed tackled by Calvin Jackson. First down at the 44. 
Andre Reed does a good job of selling to the defender. Calvin Jackson, I'm going inside, I'm going deep, then he breaks out. Good timing by Jim Kelly, trusting the receiver and throwing it before the break. Are you surprised that Miami's not sending some people after Kelly and not blitzing? Did not do it in the touchdown drive. I would expect them to change their philosophy and try to put some pressure on the quarterback. back 226 pound Holmes who played at Division two Portland State with some yardage up the middle to the 47 and a half it'll be second down and seven when you talk about Buffalo they take a gap and they run five and six guys at a time so that means they are blitzing or, or dogging somebody Miami a dog is the same thing you're on your way to the quarterback and you're going into a gap if there's a runner there you take the runner Gets the sack this time. His first of the year. Five by Miami today. They had only 13 in their first five games, but five against the Bills. Phil, one of the problems that I'm seeing with Jim Kelly is he's got too much confidence in his offensive line. Look at Bones. Now, you can't hold him out forever. Bones gets through. Jim Kelly's looking downfield. I mean, you, you, Paul, you've got to have confidence in your offensive you're line. Right. Not that much. You're right. It was a short drop. Get rid of the ball fast. Third down, 11. Good catch, and it could be a first down as Eric Moulds, the rookie, picking that one right off the carpet. Let's see where they spot progress. Lewis Oliver covering. They're going to measure for a first down. The ball has to be at the 46-yard line marker. Now, if it's not at the 40, this is, I don't think this is a first down. They're going to miss it by the nose of the ball. Here comes the ball. Is it on the ground? Boy, Moles gets his, from that angle, it looks like he gets his arm underneath it. First down. On this one. He's wrong. Must be that uh, hometown cooking. That's what it is. Yeah, you First know, I appreciate down. that hometown cooking. How about you, Dick? <laughs> Up here where Paul is. Paul, uh, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't That's make a, it over. For the uh, but I had you all over for dinner. It was great, huh? Yeah, right. You know what a spread that is when they not only have buffalo wings, but buffalo legs. Man. <laughs> <laughs> he really went all out. I went hopes and all on that deal. <laughs> First down for Kelly. Deflected and still caught as Andre Reed battling for the ball. And uh, Terrell Buckley thought he might have stolen it. Excellent job by Terrell Buckley of knowing the ball has been tipped and he didn't care about Andre Reed anymore. He starts running into him. Tim Bowens gets the tip. Because and watch, Ter watch Terrell Buckley. He sees the ball tip. Just grab the receiver. Don't let him catch it. You can do that. You can go through the receiver when the ball is tipped. There's no pass interference. Rule to catch. No game. Down the middle. Goes for it all to Reed. Too long. Lewis Oliver covering. Boy, he got hammered again. Jim Kelly. Uh, I admire you standing in there, James, but I'm going to tell you something. Watch this. A little play action. And when he lets go of the ball, there's Trace Armstrong. Bam, he gets hit, and every one of those takes its toll. I don't think uh, Miami fans have seen Armstrong play any better than he has today. Well, I, I, do, I do not know the reason why. He's motivated. Uh, we thought he was going to lose the starting job to Shane Burton and Daryl Carter, this new crew yeah. of defensive linemen, but Trace Armstrong is making a statement to Jimmy Johnson today. <laughs> Strong again. He has three and a half sacks today. I'll tell you what is impressive about what happened here is the defensive line of the Miami Dolphins took the entire offensive line of the Buffalo Bills and put them back in Jim Kelly's face. Watch Trace Armstrong. There's Parker and Zosky right there. Boom. He goes, splits a, a double team block and makes the tackle. Trace Armstrong had only four and a half sacks all last year, three and a half today. More. That O.J. McDuffie lets bounce. Durbin can't save it. Ken Urban trying to bat it back in the field of play. It'll be a touchback to Miami. The Dolphins still lead 14 7. During the game, for Hot and Wow, call Domino. Now. 
reminder tonight on NBC, Dateline at 7, 6 Central, then an all-new Third Rock, return of Seinfeld, Dwayne Knight, plus an all-new Boston Common, and the world premiere thriller, Night Visitors. It's a great night. All-new shows, NBC tonight. I watched Third Rock last week, and now my favorite color is clear. First down, Abdul Jabbar out to the 24 yard line. Your favorite color is clear, right? That's, that's you know, when we saw that promo last week about Third Rock, I, I thought it was one of the funniest lines I've ever seen or ever heard. Tough to keep your vision clear when you're under an attack. Jim Kelly sacked six times and Trace Armstrong. Perhaps the message sent out by Jimmy Johnson to the veterans that no one is secure here. You better play hard and play off. And Armstrong got the message. Wanting the veteran to stand up and, and take over, step up, and Trace Armstrong has definitely stepped up today. Second and six for Erickson, pump fake. And it's too long to Randall Hill. That would have been on target. Kurt Schultz would have had the interception because the safety was not fooled at all on the pump fake. He was over with the double coverage helping Jeff Burris. Trace Armstrong, well, he'll be, if they win the ball game, he will be defensive player of the week. Third down and six at the 24-yard line. A little nail-biting times for Kelly and the Bills. Plenty of time. Ten and a half minutes left in the fourth. Bruce trying to get the crowd into it. Jordan and McDuffie to the left. Hill to the right. Here they come. Erickson dumps it off to... Abdul Jabbar close to a first down, tackled right at the 30 by Marlo Perry. It is a first down Miami, just enough. Buffalo comes on the blitz. Watch the blitzers come inside. Excellent job by the offensive line picking it up. Jabbar sneaks out. Craig Erickson. Really being smart, throws a short, safe pass, lets the runner pick up the first down. I mean, I'm laughing at Philly says Buffalo comes on a blitz. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, 100 percent of the time. Yeah, it off to Abdul Jabbar finds a little more room, room to run and picks up over five as he crosses the 35 before Chris Spielman makes yet another tackle. Paul, in my unofficial count, in passing downs, that's 10 blitzes. The Buffalo Bills have, have done today against the Miami offense. And they don't care. They're going to let you know that we're coming with five or six, and we're going to play man and man on the corner. And we have corners that we believe in, and, and now you beat us. Irving. You're going to block us first. I'm sorry, Jeff. That's all right. Irving spikes in for Abdul Jabbar. And that spikes, and the flag goes down. Late whistle. It could have been a false start. Miami. Ball start, number 76 on you, we're off there. Moving prior to the snap, it's a five-yard penalty, no second down. That's a right tackle, James Brown, and he did move. There's just no question about it. He just, when he when he's sitting there, you can't move your arm. He's, he's I mean, the noise is, is really heavy here, and you'll see him right there on the right of your, on the left of your screen. Take a look, watch his arms move. See that arm move up? As soon as he does that, it's over. Five-yard penalty in the gates. Abdul Jabbar's first down run. Second and nine and a half. Erickson play action and drills it to the new tight end, Troy Drayton. His third catch of the game gives Miami a first down just shy of the 45. Mark Maddox to tackle. Can you believe him when Drayton came in yesterday? We asked him from Penn, from Penn State now. you got to think about this, folks. He runs a 4-5-40, okay? And when he was uh, at Penn State, look at this catch. He was a wide receiver at 225 pounds running a 4-5. You think that wouldn't have been scary? He, he wore 18, and uh, he said, I never was injured wearing 18, so he wears the necklace even when he plays. Abdul Jabbar, who carried for the 21st time today. And now we go to New York for an update. Good to stop. All right, Dick, who's thrown for more yardage than anybody in the NFL this year? Mark Brunel of Jacksonville. He's back at it again. This one to Willie Jackson. By the time all is said and done, a 41-yard touchdown to break a 14-14 tie. Jacksonville grabs the lead on the winless Jets. 21-14 late in the third, Dick. 
couldn't complete that pass. I didn't see a green shirt. No, you, wait, wait, hold it. No, you couldn't. <laughs> yes, I could have. I don't I, care. I tell you, I could have. No, Meanwhile, it's Miami near midfield. Fourth quarter, 7.59 left. At Gold Jabbar. At 22 carries for Jabbar. He has gained. 32 yards. That is that is a tough day running, and that, but it lives up to what Jimmy said. That's patience. Stay with what you believe in. The game, he's dictated it. They haven't fallen behind. Keep running up in there. Sooner or later, something good's going to happen. First three games for Five touchdowns and a 4-3 average, and that average is going to be down from 2.5 after today. You know, most every coach we've talked to so far this year, Dick, has always, they've always said, we have to be patient if we want to win a football game. You can't get away from what you can do the best. Now, they've not been able to run the ball that well today, but they still have to be patient. That's the third time out Craig Erickson has taken today because he just didn't have time to communicate the play call. They have just one left. The standings in the AFC East starting today. Buffalo with its win over Indianapolis with the edge on the Colts. Miami, do they go home three and three? Or do they move right back into the thick of things here in the East? Leading 14 to seven, a critical third and seven. Good protection. And the throw is a catch. No, trap is the call. O.J. McDuffie. Bruce Smith leveled Erickson as he delivered the ball. They did run a double team on Bruce Smith on the outside. Now, he does get through and hit Erickson after he throws the football. And here it comes down. Is that trap? Yes. yes. Watch this. You'll see Webb, then he'll push him out. Pritchard, and they back in, and Webb is there, and, and then he throws Webb away. But Erickson is moving towards That's Bruce right. Smith. John Kidd to punt, so Buffalo will get the ball with the win. Beautiful. Yeah. Too good. Now so Tim Kelly and the Bills will start from the 20-yard line with seven minutes, three seconds remaining. Fourth quarter. Seven here, in Miami. They've led throughout. Seven nothing at halftime. Build it to 14 nothing. Jim Kelly with a drive of 73 yards late in the third. Thurman Thomas, 19 yard run for the score. And now Kelly and Buffalo start from the 20. Seven minutes left in the fourth. Play action, but not for the Dolphins. Daniel Stubbs. He came through untouched. Seven sacks of Kelly. That matches the seven logged by the Giants in the game opener, in the season opener. You want to see a guy that goes directly to the quarterback? Watch Stubbs. There's a tight end, Lonnie Johnson. Parker misses him coming back, and Stubbs just, I mean, it was almost untouched to the quarterback. That is kind of scary. Ten-yard loss. That's 56 yards lost by Kelly and Buffalo on the seven sacks. Second and 20, play at Dwight and Thurman, who skins forward across the 15. Dwight Hollier got a hand on him. You know, I said that, I said to you, Phil, a, a little while ago in the second half, you know, why aren't the Miami Dolphins blitzing? Why should they? They don't need to. You're right, Paul. This front four, they've been rotating those defensive linemen. They, something Jimmy Johnson has always believed in as a coach since he's been in the pros, and they're coming in fresh and constantly putting pressure on the quarterback. Our defensive coordinator George Hill upstairs, third and 14. The Miami Dolphins come with a blitz on third and 14, and they get burned by it. What it does when you blitz, it puts man coverage down the field, opens up the middle. Andre Reed, Jim Kelly finds him. Easy first down. Tim Bowens, the tackler, pulled off the line of scrimmage into coverage, but Reed has his seventh catch today to lead all receivers. Again, play action, Kelly down the middle. His first of the season. Jim Kelly throws that ball that time. There must be five. No, he 
exaggeration, five defenders around the football. Watch when it comes down the field. Inside, one, two. Well, there's just three, right? That's enough. But two guys, the linebackers are right underneath. You cannot force the ball into tight zone coverages. Paul, when you have quarterback guys, anything over two is fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, there were actually they have 11 guys out there in white. He just only saw the other five. You know, that hurts. Uh -oh. Miami starts from the 48. Abdul Jabbar. And he has been the workhorse. He's carried often, not for very far, but he's maintained possession. 23 lugs of the ball, 34 yards. One first down right here. If they can make a first down without stopping the clock with an incompletion or whatever, it's going to take this game down to two minutes. And then you're really in trouble if you're the Buffalo Bills. Well, the Buffalo Bills only have two timeouts left. The Miami and their situation really don't care at this point because they only have one timeout. Second down, a short eight. Erickson's going to throw. That's a surprise. Incomplete. So that's a favorite of Buffalo as O.J. McDuffie unable to pull it in. Gabe Northern pressuring Erickson. Stop the clock, 434. That's a game breaker. That's the difference in the game. Miami takes a chance, fools Buffalo by throwing it instead of running it. O.J. McDuffie is wide open. He's the primary receiver of the play. You've got to complete that ball. Oh, if you gave Northern, you're right, Dick. He made the play. He hits Erickson and throws the pattern out of whack. And he's the guy that saves the first down and maybe the end of the ball game. Rookie Northern from LSU, number 99, made the play. Erickson. Bruce, you still get the sack. It's a wonderful play again. Fusion his speed, comes inside. What a play. Grabs Brent, the quarterback by the jersey. Richmond Webb had him around the waist, but I'll tell you right now, if I'm, if I'm the Miami Dolphins, just let the clock run down. Go ahead and take the penalty. It isn't going to hurt you. Let it go. Still yeah. 10 seconds left. Come on! John Kidd's punt. Copeland lets it go. Is it going to be covered? Yes! Sean Hill on the one-yard line. Hill from Montana State positioned himself perfectly a 48-yard punt, and Buffalo is 99 yards away from a tie. Oh, my. Tonight on Dateline, those high-priced microbrews. Americans are spending billions on them, but are these handcrafted ales as special as they're brewed up to be? Before your next sip, there's something you should know. Watch Dateline Sunday later tonight on NBC. Time down, Dickie. Time down. He's a I, I'll tell you, that was not a bud. It wasn't a bud? None of that stuff looked like bud. Oh. Man who knows his sons. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know you're calling in life. From the one-yard line, Kelly has 357 from his own end zone. Complete. Andre Reed, who else when you need that clutch catch? Al Calvin Jackson on the coverage. I'm going to just go back to the punt. I can't believe that Miami at the 50-yard line did not let that other 10 seconds run off the clock. Andre Reed running the hardest pattern for a quarterback to complete. The 10-yard out coming from the end zone. That's a tough throw by Jim Kelly. Stops the clock out of bounds. Picky underneath to Reed again. Across the 15-yard line, Dwight Hollier wraps him up, and Reed having his best day of the season. Nine catches today. He leads Buffalo coming in with 19, so a total on the year and up to 28. Comes out, his shoulder pads unhooked. That's all they get. Just tighten it back up again. Clock running to the sidelines. Broken up. Russell Copeland, the target, and Terrell Buckley timed his tackle to jar three. I'm going to tell you one thing. Terrell Buckley on that play, if that ball is a half second later, he's got touchdown. Watch the move, Terrell Buckley. He sees the quick pass. He's reading the quarterback, and man, is he right there. That's an outstanding play. Clock stopped with 328 left. Third and six. Buffalo has two timeouts left. Underneath. Complete. But short of the first down as Sean Hill rocks Russell Copeland. He rocks.
watch Russell Copeland and then Terrell Buckley almost rock Sean Hill. <laughs> so, fourth down, and the Bills hurry their punting team on. Fourth down and three. O.J. McDuffie drifts back to the 35. Beautiful kick. Zone, an 80-yard punt by Chris Moore, 60 net. <laughs> Let's go to New York and Greg. All right, Dick, in Pittsburgh, the Steelers have just been all over the Bengals. Jeff Blake back to throw, hit by LeVon Kirkland. Ball picked up by Rod Woodson. He'll take it 41 yards for the touchdown. The Steelers now with the lead over the Bengals, 20 to 3, three and a half to play in the fourth, Dick. Woodson. The great ones always seem to be right there, the right spot. Another touchdown defensively. You know, I'll tell you something. You, 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 it's just a punt. Chris Moore hits a great punt, but the other thing was O.J. McDuffie. Not feeling the punt. Let it go. There's no reason to make a mistake down there. But the ball going to the end zone, it doesn't make any difference. 246 left. Two timeouts left for Buffalo. Plus a two-minute timeout. And they spend uh, one right here. So one left. They want to give Kelly one final chance. Now the Miami Dolphins, who were uh, plus eight on the turnover table coming in, and they've come up with three today, two interceptions and a fumble recovery. Here's the first Zach Thomas on the first throw of the day by Jim Kelly, the rookie's first career interception. But a 33-yard net knee field goal blown by the wind wide right. Then Kelly stripped by Tim Bowen. Eventually, Miami tried on fourth down a fake on the field goal, but John Kidd tripped up. And another Calvin Jackson interception to stop a drive here in the second half. By the way, Moore's punt of 80 yards is a new Buffalo mark. Mark Bateman, 78 yards. Paul McGuire, 78 yards. Paul, you just got a win. On second down, Bill Hansen makes the play on Abdul Jabbar. 78 yards, it must have been a hurricane behind you. Tell us. You know, I was actually kicking that ball that day into the wind. Were you? Yeah. Oh, okay. And it stopped. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> War Memorial Stadium, was it? Yes, it was. Oh. Rock pile. So there's the last timeout by Marv Levy's Bills. No timeouts remaining. They're trying to stop Miami, get one last chance. Well, looking ahead next Sunday, NBC Sports, an exciting doubleheader, special time 12 noon with the NFL on NBC. Most of you will see Ricky Waters and the Eagles host these Miami Dolphins. Others, Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots square off against Jim Harbaugh and the Colts. And in the second half of our doubleheader, we'll be out in San Francisco as the 49ers host the Bengals. Broncos battle the Ravens. Others will see Jets and Bills or regional action. Check your local listings. Doubleheader next week, NFL on NBC at 12 noon Eastern. Now, let me ask real quick, real quick. Do you throw the ball here to try to get the first down or start the clock on a running play and run, run it down in two minutes? I run it, Paul. I'm ticking. I don't want to take the chance of something going wrong and giving Buffalo more time. There's nobody in the backfield. They're throwing. Erickson picked up by Ted Washington. And now the third timeout. Apparently, an earlier Buffalo timeout, as we had called it, was a charge by the officials to themselves. So that now will become the last Buffalo timeout, plus the two-minute warning. On fourth down and seven, no sack on the play. Erickson gained a yard. And you know what's going to happen? The Buffalo Bills are going to be able to run a play before the two-minute warning. There's 27 seconds on the clock. No matter what they do with the ball, and when the ball is punted, at a change of possession, the clock stops. So they'll have time to, to throw or run at least one play, possibly two. Dallas has already won. Michael Irvin's return. Washington winning. Redskins, uh, one of the surprise teams of this 96 year. Redskins kind of doing it the Jimmy Johnson way, trying to run the football and getting the defense going. With North Turner, of course, used to coach with Jimmy Johnson in Dallas. John Kidd, the low kick. Big bounce. Russell Copeland, 40, 45 to the 48-yard line. Russell Copeland. Change of possession. With two 
with 17 left in the fourth. Izzo, another tackle. Well, now time is really not a factor for the Buffalo nope. Bills offense. Two third, 217, two-minute warning. They only have to go 52 yards. But they have to score a touchdown. The thing about it is, if, if they're throwing and they complete it, uh, you still try to, you know, this is one that you take down the middle of the field. Kelly sends his rookie molds to the right. Reed is slotted left, early far left. Gets out of bounds. Terrell Hunter, the defender, a gain of uh, five or six. One play before the two-minute warning. He could get two or three. Kelly, no huddle. At the Buffalo, 46. Miami needs somebody in defense to make one more play. A sack, defend the pass. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. 13 yards on the play. The drama continues here in Buffalo with Miami leading 14 to 7. Hold on, a flag down on the play. They, might have, they might have Thurman Thomas in motion. Oh, Thurman wow. Thomas went in motion, but was he facing the line of scrimmage when he did? Because he is the one that was complaining. Buffalo did not have enough men on the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty, still second down. Yeah, I was, I was kind of worried about, about Thurman because he was the guy that was talking to the official and that you've got to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. You need seven people on the line of scrimmage. Five, six, up top. One of these receivers must be on the line of scrimmage. They are not. That is an illegal formation. Boy, that's a tough mistake to make. <laughs> So a 2.04 left in this fourth quarter. Second and nine for Kelly. Goes so deep to Reed. Complete. Brady Reed. Brady Reed to the one. That 99-yard drive now becomes first and goal. Too late getting over the top to help Terrell Buckley out. That creates the big play. John Wooden replacing Gene Atkins cut on Monday after Atkins was burned a couple of times in the loss to Seattle Sunday. They mark it at the two-yard line. First and goal. Take by Kelly. He has to throw it away. No receiver there. And there's a foul against Miami. A late hit on Kelly. Tim Bowens. So that'll make it first and goal at the one. Officially, 49 yards in the pass. Kelly to Andre Reed to give Reed 10 catches, 134 Wait yards. Wait a minute, Dick. This is intentional grounding by Jim Kelly. He throws the ball where there's no one at. You've got to throw it if you're moving out of the pocket. You can't throw the ball away in the end. He okay. was inside the tackle box, and that is a wow. tough call by the referee, but he is correct. It's intentional grounding against Jim Kelly. You cannot throw the ball away inside the tackle. That's right. He is inside the tackle intentional box. Intentional grounding. Number 12, the quarterback was still in the pocket. Also loss of down. Wow. Ten-yard penalty plus loss of down. Look where Jim Kelly is. Here's the tackle box. He is definitely inside. Watch where he throws it. Nobody close. Those out of back end zone. Good call. Heads up call. Out of the first. Second and goal. No timeouts for the Bills. Kelly throws it away again. Lonnie Johnson was in the area. So no penalty here. So it's third and goal. Pressure from Darrell Gardner, the rookie top pick of Miami. Boy, I mean, they're, wow. at, they're at the two-yard line. You run a play-action pass, and I'll tell you, you've yes, got to give the officials credit. Bernie Kokar was the guy that makes the call on this play, and he and you're and right, Paul. A, a heads-up call. That, but also Miami's defense first and goal at the two. They're playing the pass. That's really pretty impressive. That's perhaps respect for Miami's uh, defense against the rush. Kelly trips. 
but gets it off to Thurman Munson. Thurman Thomas, Munson Thomas. for only two yards. Uh, I'm a Thurman Thomas. <laughs> Thurman, <laughs> Thurman Munson. He's got baseball in his mind. All right, no more Yankee Pro Bowl. You know You're done. Chris, no, I tell you what, Chris Fielder <laughs> was telling us that was his favorite player. That's, That's right. I was in there. Thurman Thomas tripped up at the 10. All right, here's Thurman Thomas Munson, and what a great play <laughs> Jim Kelly makes just to get him the ball. Now, now, fourth down, no first down. This is touchdown. This is it. Ten yards to tie. They come out with three wide. Lonnie Johnson, the tight end, is on the right. Do or die for Kelly. He's there. Almost intercepted by Buckley. And Terrell Buckley trying to go 100 the other way. He does not step out of bounds. He can drum major it. Oh, my. What a turn of events. Step up and make the plays, you veterans. And the veterans step up and make the plays for the Miami Dolphins with every time. Trace Armstrong with the rush. Terrell Buckley reads the play. 99 yards or 100. We're waiting for the official call. We'll have to see where they're probably waiting to see the replay. And we'll show us the celebration for this young Miami team coming up here underdogs against a Buffalo team that has been incredibly impressive defensively. Terrell Buckley leading interceptor in the league, getting, I think, now with five. But Terrell Buckley in, in Green Bay and Milwaukee, they just killed this guy. Yes. There are two guys I just want to say in, in Milwaukee, Bob and Brian, Terrell Buckley just went 100 yards for touchdown. <laughs> Extra point by Nedney. And the Dolphins lead 21 to 7. Wow. Terrell Buckley has been chastised for the last couple of years, but this year for Jimmy Johnson, he has been outstanding. Read the drop by Jim Kelly. Now, in Jim Kelly's defense, he has to take the chance and throw it anyway. It's desperation. Terrell Buckley is all over it. And Buckley's second career touchdown. Jimmy Johnson. Boy, there's oh. a lot of young kid in Johnson. He can be mighty yeah. tough, but there's the other side of it that's so endearing to his players. Uh, it's, it's... Yeah, and Marv Levy. The pain of this one is Jim Kelly has not had a good game. No, he's not, and, and, and he just had to, I, I agree with Phil, he had to throw it. He was about to get hammered, and, and Andre Reed is, has been his target most of the day. He tried to force it in. Terrell Buckley picked it up. You know the one thing about this Miami team, you know, we talked about so many things that happened to this team and how these players react to Jimmy Johnson. They say he's tough, he gets in your face, he, he gets in your in your mind when you do something wrong, but when you do something right, he tells you that during the course of the week. I mean, it was so tough this week that Zach Thomas actually knocked out Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in practice. Now, that's him in practice. Yeah, well, you know, as a player, if you can deal with the truth, Paul. Rookie. And he tackled at the 22. <laughs> Kelly was intercepted four times in his last game against Pittsburgh. Three today, seven interceptions. That one goes 91 yards officially. And in 1992, it was a career day for the Dolphins' Lewis Oliver. Against the Bills, Oliver intercepts Kelly once, twice, three times. This one returned 103 yards for a touchdown here in Buffalo, tying the NFL's all-time record. Oliver sparked the Dolphins to a 37-10 win. Well, no one picking off three, the hat trick, but the team with three, plus a fumble recovery, plus sacking Kelly seven times and harassing him, and it was the Buffalo pass rush that uh, we were talking about coming in today. They give it to Holmes, but he stays in the field to play, and the clock will run 31, 30 seconds left. The reason he only got 91 yards and interception was bobbling the ball until he had control of the ball. It wasn't accounted for. But Dick, again, just to go back to the beginning of the game, I think we all now look, you believe, these all, this Dolphin team is going to be in the race all year long, and when Dan Marino comes back, it's just going to be strong. Zach Thomas makes the tackle of Quinn Early. 21 to 7, two seconds, one second. The Miami Dolphins have come to Buffalo where they've had their troubles winning, and Jimmy Johnson, young team with a very impressive upset. 
They were two and nine here at Rich Stadium since 1987. And when he talked to us yesterday, he said, uh, I, no, my young guys aren't going to be intimidated. We think we got a real good chance to win. And his players believed as well. The final, Miami 21, Buffalo 7 for Paul McGuire and Phil Sims. I'm Dick Enberg saying so long from Buffalo. We'll be sending you to our NFL on NBC Studios in New York right after these messages. Well, we were sitting here as coaches, and I tell you what, that's one that, that is absolutely you got to live with. And I think they're going to be analyzing that all week in Buffalo. I thought it was a great comeback to get back down there. I also thought it was a great football game. Hey, both sides fighting their guts out. You know, Jimmy said they had to step it up a notch before the game. They were looking for more intensity. I think they found that. I think the other thing, too, maybe all those physical practices didn't hurt them too much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, the, the big question is, did Jim, Colley, uh, Jim Kelly or Jim Schaffner make that call down on the goal line? Because that clearly took them out of the game. Now, do you see a quarterback? controversy in Buffalo at this point here are Jim Kelly's numbers for the season as you look at those consider his actions today 19 of 30 for 226 yards three interceptions sacked seven times no I don't think so because of the way he played in the K gun offense in the second half when they tried to go to the balanced offense in the first half he didn't look nearly as good the big question about his mobility he simply couldn't escape the pressure today if there's trouble in River City there'll be a change you think well, so no I, way no I, way. I think the thing you gotta say here it's not so much this game you don't you don't base this guy's career on nope. this game nope. or what happened this season this guy's been playing Great for them for a long time, and he brought them back today. There's, Tell there's not, won't there's be not. a change. And having missed two games, he it took him a half to get adjusted. Then he looked much better in the second half, Mike. Well, he did look better when he ran his offense, but I don't think that's the offense they want to run. First of all, check out. They played six games, I think. They've scored 80-some points. They've scored less than 20 points a game. I mean, it, they're not going to win doing it. I don't care how good their defense play, and that's been proven. And maybe lost in all of this hubbub is the fact that the Miami Dolphins came into Buffalo and played themselves a very solid, very strong football game. And how about Terrell Buckley, the guy that Jimmy Johnson last year on television was bad-mouthing, all of a sudden comes up with a big play. Looked like Louis Oliver from a few years ago going the distance. Is Craig Erickson looking a lot better than he did earlier? Well, he does. I say this. I said it was the very defining game for the Dolphins, more so than the Bills, and I, and I think it was. I mean, they were looking at three straight losses. I think this gets them turned back around. It makes a statement. They play a, a great game in Buffalo. I think it, it puts them in a position to go ahead and make a strong statement going to the playoffs. You know, this sounds a little silly. I think Jimmy loves this. He relishes this because he really doesn't have a true superstar in that offense right now. And I think he likes it. He likes to teach his team comps that when, when he gets Marino back, he's going to have his superstar back. But I don't think he's going to change. He forced himself to run that football today, and he ran it, and it wasn't beautiful, but he got it done. Yeah, and he's got a big game next week. Miami travels to Philadelphia to play the Eagles, but for now, they come out of Buffalo with a 21-7 to win. Jimmy Johnson's former team, the Dallas Cowboys, didn't look spectacular today, but they did get the job.